Well, hello, welcome to my studio. Today's post is gonna be a little bit different. Um, I'm not speaking to you as Tim Packer, the artist. I'm speaking to you as Tim Packer, the uh, former detective in the uh, commercial crime section of the Toronto Police Service. So I just recently received a couple emails that are obviously scams directed at artists, uh, trying to either scam you out of your work or scam you out of your money. Um, and I've done some research on the internet and this is, this is quite a big thing. And I actually get these kind of emails kind of every few months, but they're actually getting a little more sophisticated um, and potentially a little harder to pick out. So today I'm going to talk about that. Um, this post is actually coming a little late because I thought if I get this out right away today, uh, maybe it'll save somebody being taken in by these people. So the video I was going to post today, I will post tomorrow. So if you're an artist and you sell your work and you have an email account, uh, there's a very good chance that you will be targeted by these people at some point. So stick around and I will go into great depth about how to spot these people and what it is they're after. Most of you know that my background is as a police officer. I spent 18 years on the Toronto Police Service um, and probably about a third of that time I spent as an investigator investigating frauds. Um, when I ended up leaving the police force, I was a detective in the commercial crime unit uh, and I was investigating frauds that were over $2 million. Uh, those were the ones that came across my desk. Um, but I received a lot of specialized training um, investigating frauds and spotting fraudulent schemes. And as I mentioned in the intro, I received two emails last week um, that are obvious scams where someone is trying to defraud me of my work. Um, and so I'm going to read out to you the emails that I got and talk about how you can spot uh, these fraudsters for what they really are. Um, you know, I can't imagine anything more heartbreaking for an artist, particularly one who's struggling to earn a living um, than being that elation at getting a sale only to have your heart crushed um, when you find out a month or two months later that you've been defrauded, uh, not only of the painting, but potentially of some money as well. So tip, first, I guess maybe first of all, I'll just talk about typically how these uh, scams work. So you'll get an email from someone inquiring about, about buying your work and wanting to know um, what works you have available and if you can send them pictures. Um, and then they will almost invariably have some elaborate story um, about you know, why they want to handle the shipping. And so they're either moving to the Philippines or they're relocating to Ireland or it's coming as a gift to someone so they don't want it shipped uh, where they're going to find it. But there's usually about three elements um, that these all have in common. And so the first one is um, that they want to handle the shipping. Anytime somebody else wants to handle the shipping and they say, oh, my shipper will look after delivering it. Like, no, who has a shipper, first of all? People don't have shippers. That's why the elaborate story about the relocating, because that makes more sense. Um, the other thing that they do is they always try to tell you how they will pay for it. So it's often going to be by a certified check. They'll actually say, I'll pay you by a certified check. You can wait till it clears and then ship the piece, which sounds on the surface great. Um, or they'll say, I'll pay you with a credit card with a valid uh, expiry date and, and a security code number. Um, and, the, and the third thing they have in common is there's always some urgency about why they need it shipped right away. It's usually for a wedding gift or it's for a birthday gift or it's they're leaving the country. Um, but those three things put together, the fact that they are trying to determine how they will pay, they are looking after the shipping and the fact that there's some urgency. Anytime you see those three things, um, a huge red flag will, should go up. Uh, but the other thing that, that it is, is there's always just something a little odd about it. Sometimes they'll say things like, you know, they, they'll say that they like your art. Um, please send them images of available pieces and, and I will tell you which ones I will buy. Um, which, as we all know, people don't buy art that way. People don't, don't determine they're going to buy artwork before they look at it. Um, and so there's always something that just seems a little bit funny. 
Um, and also the English is often just a little bit odd. They use sentence structure um, that's not normal. So these are probably coming from off, off, offshore, overseas, um, which again, that in itself is not necessarily a red flag because um, especially in Canada and the US, we have huge immigrant populations. So people might have a little bit odd English phrasing um, if they come from another country. But typically there's all three of these, these things. Um, and what they're trying to do is one of two things. They may in fact be trying to defraud you out of your artwork, in which case, you know, that's when they're just having their shipper kind of pick it up uh, and they'll, they'll give you a check or whatever it is they've said to pay for it and they then have defrauded you of the artwork. Uh, but sometimes they don't even care about the artwork. Sometimes, especially what they'll do is you'll, you'll get it where, it's, where you're actually asked to ship it, but it's to a country. I had a couple from Dubai um, or United Arab Emirates where they want it shipped there, but they say they will pay you for the shipping. Um, or, or no, they, they want their shipper to do it. They'll pay you for that and then you pay your shipper, their shipper. So they'll, so I had one piece, for example, where a person was interested and it was gonna be about $1,000 to ship it to the United Arab Emirates. And what they wanted to do was they would send me a check for the painting and the shipping costs, but then I would, I would then pay his shipper here for the shipping costs. And what they want there, the way that scam works is they're probably sending it with a certified check. Again, certified checks should send up a huge red flag. Uh, there was a time when those were actually, you know, very strong. Right now, there's huge frauds going on where they're washing actual certified checks, changing the name and the information on them, um, and you wait for it to clear through your bank and you think it's good. All that clearing through your bank means is that the bank has checked, those funds are, are on hand in that account and the funds get transferred. But what happens is at the end of the month when that check goes back to the account holder and they say, no, this is a fraudulent check, this is not a check that I wrote, that's the time when you realize you've been defrauded because that bank takes the money off your bank and your bank now comes after you for that money and you've lost that money. So anytime or, or what they will do is they will overpay you. They'll send you a check for $5,000 when you only, you're only billing them $3,000 and then they'll say, oh, I'm sorry, that was... That was my mistake. Can you just please send me the balance? So send them the $2,000. So when the check finally bounces, you're out the 5,000 they sent you. You didn't, get, you didn't get paid for the painting, but you're also out the $2,000 you sent them. Um, and so, and, and again, these guys used to be pretty blatant. You used to get sometimes emails that just said, dear artist, please send available pictures of paintings that you have and I will tell you which ones I want to buy, um, which that's, that stands out uh, as kind of being kind of really odd and that's not the way people buy art. Or you would look up and see that it was, that it was you were part of a list that they'd emailed it out, blanket to a bunch of different people. Um, but they're getting more sophisticated now and that's why I thought I should actually kind of post this video um, and we'll talk about things to look for. I'm gonna read you out the actual emails that I got, although one of them, for some reason, I can't pull it up. Um, so how do I know for sure? I guess that's the first thing. How do I know for sure that these, these emails are fraudulent um, and these people are fraudulent? Because again, all kinds of warning bells go off, but anytime somebody kind of sends you an email um, about requesting buying one of your paintings and you think, geez, something here just doesn't sound right, just go to Google. So the one, the first piece that I got was from a fellow by the name of Kevin Waters. So I was 99.9% .9 sure that this is a scam, um, but I just Googled Kevin Waters art scam and immediately all kinds of stuff comes up about people who have been defrauded by this very same scam and, and by using the name Kevin Waters. That's probably the most popular name out there. Um, so it's like, as soon as you do that, you know, okay, it's a scam. Now, the second letter that I got, I, um, I Googled the person. The person did not come up as reported in any scams, but the, the phraseology that's used in the emails and some of the very specific things that are said in there, that comes up in examples that other people have posted of these email scams. Um, so I'm just going to, I'll read you out the first one. Um, so the email that started with the first email, as I said, these people used to just kind of hit you up, show me pictures, um, and I'll buy something. Um, now they're trying to romance you a little bit. They're actually trying to create some sort of a, 
of, of a kind of interaction with you and almost like a friendship. And they also go into inordinate amount of detail about their life, um, trying to make it seem like a real person. So the first one, it says, good morning. My name is Jennifer Snellgrove. I went through your website and found some nice pieces that will suit as a gift, as a birthday gift to my mother. But before I go ahead to request for a quote, I want to confirm if you do take order at this time, please let me know. Thank you for your time, Jennifer. So there's a few things there that would raise a red flag right off the bat. First of all, it just says good morning. There's no good morning, Tim. There's, so this is very likely just they're cutting and pasting it in. Um, but also some, some different things. It's like I found some nice pieces that will suit as a birthday gift to my mother. It's like, really, do we buy paintings that would suit as a birthday gift for someone? Uh, you know, we buy pieces that we fall in love with. Um, but then, and then again, she goes on, but before I go ahead to request for a quote, I want to confirm if you do take order at this time, please let me know. Uh, well, first of all, this email came in through the contact on my website. My website has every single piece that's available as well as the pricing there. So it's like, why would someone who's on your website be requesting you to send them photos of available pieces and also want to confirm if you do take order at this time. I mean, we're not, this is not French fries or a pizza that you're ordering. People don't order a painting. Um, so, I mean, immediately a red flag went off for me, but it's like, you know what? It could just be a language issue. Um, so it's like, I responded and just said, you will find all of my available pieces and all of the pricing on my website. So then I get the reply, it says, hello, Tim. Okay, so now at least she's got a nibble on the end of the line. She's gonna take the time to see who it is that she's actually um, speaking to. It says, thank you for your email. Uh, Algoma Abstraction and Kameniske Lakeview are those pieces that I am interested in purchasing for my mom. It's like, oh, okay. So I got the price of each piece on your website. Can you provide me with your full name, mailing information and cell phone number? so that I can drop a check in the mail for you. So there's a huge red flag. Why do you need my cell phone number? Why do you need my mailing information? Um, well, I, I shouldn't say that, but it's like, you can find that on my website, but obviously they're not going through and checking things. This is a standard thing they have sent out to everybody. Um, but so that I can drop a check for you. And here we go. Here's when the red flag starts going up because so now should they're trying to oversell it. When you confirm to me that your bank has cleared my check, I'll call my mover to pick them up from you and deliver them to, they mo to my mom in the Philippines. I want to rely on, on you on packing these pieces. How much extra will this cost me? Right. So again, we've got a bunch of red flags here. She wants my cell phone number. I don't give my cell phone number out to anybody, and I certainly don't give it out to people who are buying a painting off me who I've never met before. Uh, so this is also maybe they're looking at doing some sort of identity theft. You should never give out any information to people that you aren't comfortable that's already up on your website. Plus, she hasn't asked me how I want that transaction to happen. You don't call Big Buy or Best Buy or, or Home Depot or any other store. or any, You don't contact them online and tell them how you're going to pay for your purchase. You abide by their policies. So anytime someone is right up front telling you how they're going to pay for it, that's because they have access. She obviously has access to the checks in this name, and that's the only way that she wants to pay for it. Um, but also the fact that, oh, she's going to call her mover to pick them up and deliver them to her mom in the Philippines. Uh, and there's a very good reason why they don't want to give you a shipping address, because even if they have defrauded you, if they've given you a shipping address that you've shipped it to, that's some place for the police now to start. See who actually owns that address where that piece was shipped. Uh, and they don't want that. So they're always going to have some sort of reason while they're going to look after the shipping for you. Um, okay, so that's the first one. Um, the second one was from this Kevin Waters. And it started out that uh, he has this big elaborate story that he saw my work years ago. Um, he had my email, he'd copied my email address down at that time, but he couldn't remember my website. Um, so could I please send him um, the details of my website so he could go, go on there because he was having a wedding anniversary coming up and he wanted to um, buy, it as a, buy a painting as a surprise for his wife. Um, and so I thought, well, gee, that's a little weird. I'm getting this email from 
that's coming into me, I can tell when an email comes to me whether someone gave it to me directly to my personal email or whether it's coming from my contact info on my website. So this person is actually emailing me through the contact info on my website, but telling me he wants me to send him my website information. Again, he hasn't actually gone to my website and looked through or anything else. He's, they're just pulling up artist emails and then they're just pasting in the standard letter they have. So you'll, if you find anything in there that just seems like a little bizarre, it's like, gee, why would he ask me that? That's right there. He had to be there. Um, but anyways, I just, so it's like, okay, let's see where this will go. Cause I'm just curious now. It's like, okay, these scammers are getting a lot more elaborate. Uh, they're willing to do two or three emails first before they hit you up with their pitch where you obviously now I know it's a scam. Um, so I said to him, like, well, you obviously got this from my website, all my stuff. It's like, maybe he didn't go to the page where the originals are. So you can go to the page where my originals are, uh, and see the pricing there. Um, so then he gets back to me, um, and says, dear Tim, thanks for the message. I must tell you, I intend to give my wife a surprise with the immediate purchase of the piece. Again, that language is just really, really stilted, almost like someone who's taken elaborate care to try and construct a sentence, but really doesn't understand English. Everything, every part of the sentence is in the right place, but nobody talks like that. Oh, hang on a sec. I've got a, something in the oven that I have to get, so I'll be back in a sec. Okay, sorry about that. So we're back. So where was I? So yeah, just the English always just sounds a little weird. And here it goes on from there. Also, if you'd like to know, I'm relocating to Ireland soon and our wedding anniversary is fast approaching. So I'm trying to gather some good stuff to make this, this event a surprise one. I am buying the Highlands Mosaic 18 by 18 art piece as a gift to her. Let me know the last firm price you are selling this to me. I think it's worth it anyway, so I'll be sending a check. So again, the language is just weird. It's very stilted. I've never met any, when people contact you to buy a piece, they tell you about the fact that they love this piece. Um, and they also ask you if they can purchase it. They ask you if you're willing to ship it. They don't tell you they're buying the piece. They don't tell you you're going to ship it to them. Um, and they don't tell you that they're sending a check. Uh, they ask you how you want to go about, um, doing the transaction. And here we go. So it's like already, okay, yep, he's going to send me a check. It's like, okay, for sure this is a fraud. And then we go to, as regarding shipping, you don't have to worry about that. In order not to leave any clue to my wife for the surprise, as soon as you receive and cash the check, my shipping agent, who is also moving my personal effects, will contact you to arrange pickup. I would have come to purchase the piece myself, but at the moment I'm on a training voyage to the North Atlantic Ocean. I'm an ocean engineer with new hires who are fresh from graduate school and won't be back for another couple of weeks. Regards, Kevin. Uh, so again, they get into these elaborate things about who they are and what they're doing. The other thing is, like again, for some reason I don't have the first email. I think I must have deleted it because I knew it was a scam. But he told me he was from San Antonio, Texas. And it's like, really? You're from San Antonio, Texas, but you would have come to purchase the piece yourself? You're going to drive up to Whitby? I don't think so. Um, again, because this is, this is standard stuff that they just kind of cut and paste and put into their, um, into their emails. Um, and then he said, so and then it's regards, Kevin PS in the meantime, kindly get back to me with your full name. You want the check payable to cell phone number and contact address, preferably for FedEx, not PO box where a check can be mailed to. So I can get the check prepared and have it mailed out to you right away. Um, so again, this, both of these stood out to me like, okay, they're doing the three things there. There's some urgency. There's a reason why they are going to handling the, handle the shipping. Um, and they are actually determining how it's to be paid for it. And it's just weird language and nobody buys art like that. Again, it's like, they're not even interested in the specific piece. They're just interested in a piece because either they want a piece of your art or in most cases, they're going to try and sting you with the shipping costs. So you're going to be out, not only the painting, but you're going to be out cash. Um, and as I say, these are getting much more elaborate than they used to. They used to just send you out a basic form letter. Um, and if you didn't know that this sort of thing is a scam, I could see how someone could easily be taken in. 
Again, I think people, you know, they think that um, a certified check is like cash in the bank. It's actually one of the vehicles now that fraud artists are using to uh, scam people via the internet because of that perception that a certified check is more, um, more guaranteed than a personal check. Um, and it is actually, if it's from someone you know and who you trust, um, but if you don't know who the person is, there's a good chance that the check has been, what maybe potentially was a certified check at one point, it's been washed, the names are changed on it, or they're actually counterfeiting the certified checks themselves. So I, uh, as, as, a, um, as an investigator in frauds, I think there's a special hell that's reserved for these types of people because often the devastation that they leave in their wake is much more than that of a person who walks into a variety store with a knife or a gun and steals a hundred or two hundred dollars even though those people are traumatized by that one event um, as i say i investigated frauds over two million dollars uh, and saw the devastation that it wreaks when someone's entire life savings has disappeared um, and anyways these fraud people, uh, I very rarely lose my temper or feel like I would like to commit violence, but if I could meet, meet either of these two people, I would. So um, I hope you have found this, well, I know you're going to find this uh, educational, um, but be on the wear for this, on, on the lookout for this, because what these people also prey on, they prey on the fact that artists, particularly starting artists or struggling artists, are just so eager to want to kind of conclude every sale that comes their way so that we will go through hoops um, to finalize a sale. So you should always be in control of how the actual transaction happens. If there's any shipping involved, you should be involved in doing the shipping so you know where that painting is going. Um, anytime there's urgency involved, again, a little red flag should go off. Now, any of these things on their own are not necessarily evidence of a, of a of you trying to be scammed, but all three of them together, I would say always are. And I would never ever engage with these people. There's no point in even, even going back to them and saying, oh no, I require it via PayPal or via e-transfer or via wire transfer. Just put them in your spam folder and be on the lookout for further ones. Oh, the other thing that, that's a telltale thing too, these two emails came a day apart one of them was trying to purchase two paintings on the website, and one of them was another painting on the website, um, but neither of them were doubled up. It wasn't like there was two requests for the same painting. I only have three small paintings on the site, and it's just funny that, gee, on the one day one person wants to buy two, and on the next day a different person wants to buy the only other one that's left. Um, another thing you want to look at sometimes too, I remember one, one I got earlier was from a fellow by the name of Omar. Um, and then the next day I got another request from someone else. But when I went up and checked the URL in the email, it was from like Shirley. But when I went up and checked the email, it was coming from the same email address as the person who had contacted me two days before who said he was Omar from the United Arab Emirates. So that's what to look out for. Um, I'm going to give you also a little bit of advice on what, so how do you transact business? Because the only way to be 100% sure you're never going to get scammed is to never ever sell anything to anyone who contacts you via the internet. Well, that's playing on the defense, not the offense. And we know how I feel about that. So the best advice that I can give you is... Um, we sell, we sell a lot of work on the internet via PayPal, and PayPal is a very secure way of receiving payment. It's not 100% guaranteed, but for someone to create a false PayPal account, they have to go through all the trouble of creating a false PayPal account, getting a credit card or a bank account identified and verified, and then making the transaction. Now, unless they're going to do that for every single transaction, as soon as they fraudulently um, try to buy one item and PayPal finds out that, that they're not going to get paid, that account is no longer good for anything else. So, I mean, it's a very, very safe way to do it in general. So are e-transfers. So e-transfers, which is a way of transferring uh, money by email from one account to another. Um, but if you, if you are absolutely want to be 100% certain, then the only way to do that is by a wire transfer from the purchaser's bank to your bank. Um, 
And if you're not sure how to do that, you can contact uh, the, the people at the bank where you have your account. Um, and so for me, if I'm doing a large um, transaction to someone overseas, I'll only do it via wire transfer. And in that case, the, the money is actually being sent from the purchaser's bank to your bank. Um, and there's, there's virtually no way of being defrauded there because they're actually it's dealing one bank to another, not one individual. When you are taking a check, you're getting a promise to pay you that amount from someone who says they have money in that bank. When you're getting a wire transfer, it's actually electronically transferring the funds from one bank to another. So if in doubt, always require a wire transfer. Never ever ship anything until you've received payment in full. Uh, and again, the things to look out for um, that kind of they're going to they're just going to buy work like they're ordering French fries or a pizza. It's almost like show me what you have and I'll tell you what I'm going to buy. There's always some urgency um, there. They don't want you to do the shipping. They'll come up with elaborate stories about why they will look after it. Often it involves them moving or them being out of the country. Um, and finally, they are not even going to ask you how you want to conduct a transaction. They're going to tell you, I'll pay you by certified check or I'll pay you by check or I'll pay you with secure credit card with valid, uh, valid expiry and the security number. Um, and then just in general, anytime something just doesn't sound right, and the final piece of advice I can give you is what we used to tell everybody when I was a detective in the fraud squad. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Now I'm going to put a uh, website up here now to a, um, I found this, uh, the, this link to the Agora Gallery, who has actually part of their website dedicated to kind of stopping these kind of scams. And what you'll also find in there is all kinds of examples of variations of these emails. Um, and when you go through, you will see commonalities in the language. Even if they've changed the name or changed the story, there's certain things that kind of show up again. Um, where is the one for me that he said? Da, 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 da. Let me know the last firm price you are selling this to me. I think it's worth it anyway, so I'll be sending a check. That wording appears in about 10 different uh, versions of this from different people. Also the whole idea of someone's mom moving to the Philippines. Um, so you can go through there and look for this because I'm sure they've got 30 or 40 different variations and they just cut and paste them to make them a little bit different. Um, so if you're an artist, do not be afraid of selling your work on the internet, but be very, very vigilant. Um, if in doubt, Google the person's name, um, check out this site at Agora Gallery, um, and if in doubt, do not go ahead. But never, ever, ever refund money back to someone who has made a purchase to you. Uh, I would say never let someone else uh, handle it through their shipper, and always be a little bit suspicious when there's some urgency for you to uh, conduct the transaction. So I hope you have found this interesting. Um, and helpful. Uh, if you have, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, I welcome your comments. You can share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'm Tim Packer, and I thank you for your time.